We're going to talk briefly, kind of in general, about our apparatus and what hose lines to help set you up for how we do business on structure fires. And specifically, we've got five types of apparatus. We have engines and tankers that we send to structure fires. We have brush trucks that handle medical emergencies and brush fires. We have rescue squads that don't carry any water and are for rescue things. And then a number of specialty vehicles. We have boats. We have an air uh, truck. We have a support truck and those sorts of specialty vehicles. But really, we want to talk about engines and tankers because we're headed into uh, needing to use engines and tankers to deal with structure fires. So an engine has a unit number that ends in 01 if it's a frontline engine or 08 if it's a reserve. So engine 1201 is a frontline engine from station 12. Most of our engines have 1250 gallon a minute pumps and a 750 gallon tank. All of our engines carry a thousand feet of four inch supply line. Supply line is used to connect from a water source to the attack engine, an engine that is uh, supplying hose lines to attack the fire. We have three pre-connected inch and three quarter lines and one pre-connected two and a half inch line, hand line. All of those are 200 foot and that's the engines carry three inch and three quarter pre-connects and one two and a half pre-connect. Um, the inch and three quarter pre-connects on the pierces are right over the pump panel. On the Rosenbauers, there's one on the front bumper and two on the back bumper. And then everybody has a two and a half inch pre-connect that comes off the hose bed in the back. All pre-connected lines on our department are 200 feet long. But what if 200 feet's not long enough? What if you need to extend um, a hand line? So we have 500 additional feet of two and a half inch line, and there's a Y on there, and so we would be able to then uh, pull that 500 foot hose or part of it, um, attach it to the attack engine, and then put your pre-connected line on the end of it. And we also have a high-rise pack, which carries 100 feet of inch and three quarter hand line and nozzles in a bag that allows you to carry that to a remote spot. So basically just kind of a heads up, if you pull a, a pre-connected inch and three quarter line and you pull it around to the back of a house and it's more than 200 feet that you're gonna need and you need to extend that line, the high rise pack is a quick way to extend that line by another couple of sticks, another 100 feet or so. Um, it may also be necessary that we put a different line in the put a 500 part of that 500 foot of two and a half in there um, and, and extend things around back so basically think of that as situations where we're far away from where we need to deploy the hose line and how do we do that and we do it uh, with that 500 foot of two and a half so this may be a little confusing but it will become more clear as we work our way through some practical evolution so engines have big pumps 750 gallon tank thousand foot of supply line, three pre-connects that are, hand, are inch three quarter hand lines and a two and a half. Tankers on the other hand have a much smaller pump capacity, twice as big of a tank capacity, the same supply line and the same three pre-connected hand lines. They don't have a two and a half pre-connect and they don't have the two and a half supply line. Um, and then tankers again end in 05 if they're front line or 09. So Tanker 505 is a frontline tanker at Station 5. Uh, tanker 109 is our reserve tanker. So we talked about pre-connected lines. What do we attack fires with? Structure fires, vehicle fires, dumpster fires. What do we attack fires with? Well, typically an inch and three quarter hand line. Those are maneuverable. Those can be managed by one or two personnel. They only flow 125 gallons a minute. If it's a, um, off a pierce with a combination nozzle that lets us either go straight stream or a fog pattern, or 90 gallons a minute with the smooth bore nozzles off the Rosenbauers, the Rosenbauers have compressed air foam system or CAFs. So these are hand lines that are relatively easy to maneuver, 200 feet long, will flow decent water when mixed with foam will do a lot of fire suppression and many of our fires, most of our fires, are handled with one or two, rarely a third, inch and three quarter line. In some cases where there's big fire and we have good water and in certain situations we'll use that two and a half inch hand line, that flows twice as much water and probably takes twice as many people 
to manage it and move it. But in some cases where you need big water fast to flow on your fire and you have a sufficient supply, that 250 gallon a minute, two and a half, um, is, is the choice. But I would say probably 90 or 95 percent of our fires are managed with one or two inch and three quarters lines, rarely a third one. So those are the ones we focus on a lot. <clears throat> So our apparatus, our engines and tankers, our tankers can function in the fire attack role, but typically we would rather do that with an engine. So engines are usually the attack engine um, and the tanker is usually uh, paired with that, an engine to give you uh, really the best of both worlds. The engine tanker concept allows us to have 1,500 gallons of water on the tanker, more or less, 750 gallons of water on the engine more or less we've got more than just a little more than 2,000 gallons of water and we're only going to flow one or two 100 to 125 gallon a minute hand lines so we have several minutes to put out a whole bunch of fire if we can pair that engine and tanker now in some cases a tanker arrives first becomes attack or in some cases one engine arrives first and does the attack and the second apparatus is another engine and not a tanker well it's just got half the water of a tanker so we just continue to work it with you know with that sort of a plan we adapt and overcome there but in general if we could map it out and have everything perfect we would have engines and tankers running together and arriving in that order and so that's kind of what I already said the typical pattern the engine arrives first commits to the attack position near the structure, near the vehicle, near the whatever it is that's on fire. So we're talking about, not talking about natural cover fires here, we're talking about structure fires and, and similar things. And that engine arrives first and it goes into the attack position. We start pulling hand lines off of there and we start attacking that fire. And then the tanker stages, means it stays back, it waits at the closest water supply spot until the IC says, uh, no, I need you to lay me a supply line or I need you just to come up here and attach. I'm just going to need your water. I don't need you to lay a supply line. We're not going to need more water than what we've got between that engine tanker pair. Nursing is the term for attaching one apparatus to another to supply water to it. So typically our tankers nurse our engines and that allows us to have that large booster tank, that large tank concept of engine tanker pairs. So when we are dispatched to a residential structure fire, commercial structure fire, we send three engines and two tankers and a squad and we ask for a medic unit. So what do those engines do? Well that first engine is the attack engine, goes up to the fire and is ready to attack the fire. The next engine is the supply engine. Its job is to supply the attack engine with water hopefully from a hydrant, but if not, from a process where we use portable tanks that we fill with water and shuttle tankers to fill those tanks again. And um, that process um, allows us to pretty much create a hydrant wherever we need one. Then the third engine is the fill site engine. And that is to allow us very simply to fill tankers rapidly. Tankers are good when they're shuttling water. That means they're moving carrying water. It's a good tanker is on the move. It's not good to have a tanker sitting at a hydrant filling slowly. So we put an engine at our fill site and we work very hard to be able to fill that tanker within three minutes of it arriving at the fill site. Then we send, like I said, three engines and two tankers. Well, the first tanker stops and waits for the attack engine to say, come on in and nurse or lay me a supply line and nurse. Where's the second tanker go? Well, the second tanker goes right to the supply engine and begins supplying the engine, begins nursing that supply engine while we decide, are we going to use a hydrant or are we going to have to make a hydrant with a portable tank? And so a lot of this will make more sense to you when you see drawings, when you actually see it happen. Um, but we want to give you some basic background. First engine is attack, second engine is supply, third engine is fill site. First tanker goes with the first engine, second tanker goes with the second engine. And so that's pretty much uh, the summary of this thing is what do engines do, what do tankers do, how much water do they carry, what kind of hose lines do they carry. 
Remember that the engine and the tanker both each carry 1,000 feet of supply line. So we can lay very long lines to where we can find hydrant, to where we can make a water supply source. And then what is the role of those apparatus and what is the role and the size and length of hose lines? We tend to use inch and three quarter hand lines for fire attack, although we do have a two and a half inch that we can use for fire attack. It flows a lot more water but needs a lot more people to hold it and, and manage it. And then everything that's pre-connected is 200 feet. So those are the takeaways, and so we should be able to walk up to you at any time and say, how long is a pre-connect on our department? You should say 200 feet. And we should say, what's the pre-connected hand line that we use most that comes off the sides of the piers or the ends of the rows and bounds? Oh, that's an inch and three quarters. And so what's a tanker do? Well, a tanker hauls water, although it can function as an engine in a pinch. What's an engine do? Well, an engine has more options for hose lines, larger pump, that's for attack, although it hauls water too. So we have this very flexible um, situation going on here and that we really like to run an engine with a tanker right behind it. That works out best for us.